Good morning, universe. Hello, world. Cheers. Coffee cheers. Come on. Give us your mug. Well, since Halloween is around the corner, a few days from now, I thought maybe we could talk about a little spooky thing. Something, some interesting, magical, spooky, different, strange, original story. Oftentimes, spooky things are just things that are testing our imagination and bringing us out of our normal daily boundaries and allowing us to see and experience things that we didn't think we could sometimes that we didn't think we should but nonetheless it adds new horizons to our palette of experiences well sad really good good coffee okay do you want to start do you want to tell us a story sure let's see the one that i remember most in this realm it was when I was probably about 11 years old maybe 12 and some months before my dad had died uh, I had a small group of friends it was before he died some months before this event uh, he, uh, my dad had died Ah, I thought you said both before he died. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and my little group of friends, uh, we were planning a sleepover at a neighbor's at one of the friends' house in the neighborhood. Uh, and it was just a simple little bring your sleeping bags and crash in the basement floor and all that. And uh, the friend also had an older sister, a teenage sister. Uh, and her friends were also having a get together in that house, uh, and they didn't want us around. We were, we were kind of nuisances to them. And of course, we were, we were, uh, a bit intrigued about what these teenage girls were doing. They were, they were on the next age level than us, and so everything was mysterious about them. Uh, but they didn't, they didn't want us around. We were a bother to them, and they had already planned, the girls had already planned, that they were going to uh, do a sort of a do-it-yourself seance in the basement where we were going to have our sleepover. And they must have read somewhere or seen somewhere that you can make your own type of Ouija board with slips of paper and uh, and there it was the instruction was to find the um, uh, find the oldest glass in the house and also to uh, to have candles lit and so they made their own type of Ouija board platform uh, and set it up in the middle of everything and they they really wanted us gone but we refused to leave uh, and we just uh, so they they relegated us to sit on the periphery of it all uh, where we wouldn't be a bother to them so they started their fun and started asking questions uh, to the board, to the spirit world, and uh, everything was chaotic. There was no, there was no uh, indication of no coherent words being formed. Uh, a yes or no question would not result in a yes or no answer, uh, and they were very frustrated. And at some point, one of us, might have been one of them or one of us guys, uh, said, well, maybe it's because uh, whoever wants to talk wants to talk to one of us and one of the boys. Well, most of them didn't like that because they were trying to get us out of there. Uh, and But someone asked the question, is there someone else in the room that you want to talk to? And the answer, for the first time, the board was definitive and the answer went to yes. It's okay with that. Mm. So, so then they asked who? Uh, I think they went through a couple and they asked my name and when they got to my name it said yes. 
So, so they didn't like that, but it was moving forward, so they were a bit intrigued that there was something going on. Uh, and we were increasingly intrigued, but I was very doubtful of it all. Uh, I thought they were trying to scare us to get us out of there. So now that it was established that I was the connection, uh, at least supposedly, then, then uh, uh, I had asked, who is looking to communicate? Uh, uh, what's your name? And, uh, and it started, um, uh, it started, the indication was that it was my dad. And, but I it was still dubious, so I thought I'd ask a question that would essentially uh, test it. And I said, uh, okay, what is your middle name? And my, my dad's middle name was Leonard. And I can't imagine how anyone in that room would have known uh, that. And when the answer started coming, the first letter indicated was L. The second letter was E, and then I said, fine, we can stop now, <laughs> I get it. Um, but I thought, well, okay, this is interesting, let's ask another hard question. And so then I asked, well, okay, what did you die of? And uh, my dad had died of leukemia, a form of cancer. <coughs> uh, and the answer came back, cancer. And then my memory is a little bit foggy during what happened next, but everyone was kind of spooked, freaked out about that all because I was verifying the accuracy of the answers. Uh, and we had asked a couple other questions, uh, but one of the final questions that we were asked was whether or not, uh, whether or not uh, they could send a message, uh, uh, maybe through the candles or anywhere. Uh, and so, we're all sitting there staring at the candles and nothing's happening. Uh, so that was, that was, we felt, probably the end of it all. So, so then uh, we turn on the lights and uh, giggling and, and intrigued and a little scared about it all. Uh, and I was sitting in an old sort of what would today be called a man cave upholstered chair, just some old raggedy chair that was in the basement. And uh, I had, um, I realized that draped across my leg was an electric cord, which I thought was a little weird because how would it appear there on its own? Of course, when you're nervous and all that, you could be fiddling with things there, that are there. But then, but then uh, uh, I pulled on the cord and there was something buried inside the chair underneath the cushions. And I pulled it out and it was a, uh, it was a little transformer like you used to use with electric trains or things like that. And, uh, and I looked at it and, I, and it said transformer right on it. And, and I looked up at everyone and I held it up and I said, my dad, where he used to work, made transformers for a living. Oh my God. So that was a bit of a, another <laughs> shock, which made us all <laughs> further spooked and laugh and happy and all that. <laughs> um, and then we we put everything away, and and the girls went their way, and we went our way, and we finally got to sleep, and 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 then the next morning, we looked uh, at the candles, uh, the dripping of the wax. Oh, and there was one final message I forgot to mention. The the, the, the girls asked uh, during the during the um, uh, seance if it was that. Uh, uh, if there was any particular message that that he would like to give to me, and it spelled out "I love you," which was very nice, but of course anybody could have said that. But it was still a great way to end the evening, and it was very heartwarming. Uh, of course, very touching. So then, shortly after that, is when the the question was asked if they could send a message. Uh, and when we didn't see anything, except then later the transformer cord. But the next morning, the wax drippings, uh, we noticed, formed a perfectly chambered heart at the base of the candle. Mm -hmm. uh, and my dad was really, really into anatomy uh, to such an extent that, that when he was in the, and biology, and to such an extent that when he was in the hospital uh, prior to his illness, uh, he would 
he would spend most of his time uh, in the hospital bed reading uh, medical journals and uh, and um, anatomical texts and and other things so he could learn more about what was going on uh, with him and in general about how the human body works. So he was well aware of, of all those things uh, and it was interesting that that kind of uh, detailed manifestation occurred. So from that point on, whenever I reflect on what I believe and what I'm open to believing, I reflect on that experience as an 11 or 12 year old and how it broadened my horizons about what is possible and what can be communicated and, and uh, what may exist out there. Wow. That's a wonderful story. <laughs> well, cheers to Dad. Cheers to <laughs> Harry that communicated Harry. from the underworld. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Sure, he's doing well now. Oh, absolutely. He's probably reincarnated by now. Oh, I have so many stories. I need to, to write down which they are. So I. Oh, man, I have thousands of stories but because you talked about the Ouija board I remembered something that I was about around your, the same age you were and the similar circumstances that was something very interesting uh, that was the first time that we had a, uh, that we used a, a handmade Ouija board because you see I was raised in Brazil and there were no Ouija boards there that didn't exist. I wonder why. They should have been, you know, but mm -hmm. but we did use, like you said, the same thing. We used, we made letters on slips of papers and put them around uh, a circle on the table and a yes and a no paper. And we turned the glass upside down. And it would put up one finger, the tip of the finger, just touching the top of the glass, barely touching exactly. it. Exactly, that's the way they right? do it. Right? Yeah, so yeah, it could yeah, move. Yeah. Now, the funny thing is that something I thought about many years later, actually just recently I thought about this. How do we know knew to do that? How did we know to do that? Because it was just you know it was me my 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 older brother uh and some friends i was yeah maybe i was even younger than 12 because i don't remember my my younger siblings being around i don't know they were still babies probably so yeah i was probably i'd say nine or ten but how who knew how to do that who knew about the cup and the letters that is the fun thing about it to think about if you go back and who had that idea first who knew how to do it i don't know who knew how to do it it is very strange i think that is even even stranger than any seance with with that method because who came up with it well, how would we have known how to do it i, I don't know well, it suggests to me that there have been people throughout history in virtually every tradition. Yeah, that, that try to communicate. To the, that, no, I know that, but the, the, I'm sorry, I don't want to stop you. Go ahead. Uh, that have, that have uh, unique abilities and insights based on their refined perception and, and uh, developed consciousness where they may know things uh, and how things can be known on a deeper level than is common. Uh, there are stories, for an example, of herbalists who, uh, early, early herbalists who, who could know what a particular plant or herb was good for just by touching it or just by asking. And I think similarly, in this vein and from other traditions, that that there had to be people of very special, refined perception and consciousness to be able to 
know definitively by tapping into that field of knowledge that exists on some subtle levels of creation and within ourselves of how more knowledge can be gained, more answers can be acquired. Yeah, 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 I understand that. I just, I don't understand how in the circle of family there, anybody knew how to do that. How anybody knew that there was a cup, you could put the little papers. Where did that come from? I never saw it written anywhere. Nobody ever talked about it. We're just mm -hmm. sitting together and decide, oh, let's try to talk to the spirits. And, and then we all knew what to do. And that's to me spooky more you know spookier <laughs> than sure. a story itself because if you think back who knew that we were children we never done that before none of us where did that come from so that's weird to me but going back to my story we were at my grandma's house and it was me my older brother and i think a couple of cousins there maybe a couple of neighbors too i don't remember but it was not not that many people and we were there and my and it was some weekend it was after lunch because i my mother and my father liked to take an hour nap after lunch mm -hmm. they could afford to do that and they were in another room and that this is pertinent to the story i'm gonna tell but and then we decided to do it. Okay, we cut the little papers, got a glass, and 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 we were doing it. And and my older brother, he was always very a bit scared of this spiritual world and this kind of thing. And he he didn't sit there. He didn't put his finger or anything. He just stayed there watching. You know, like ready to run if anything happens <laughs> at the edge of the table. Just I'm not gonna take part, but I I wanna see what's gonna happen. And one of the things that people used to ask, and even in other uh, seances like this that we did later on, that they they used to ask who who is most powerful here? Who is giving you power? Hmm. You know, they asked that. I don't know why people. It came up again in other times, but they asked who is giving, like, who is here in between us that is making, you know, is helping really make this glass move. And it was always me. Uh -huh. And it always came, you know, wrote my name. It was always me. And I was like, oh, that is weird. But, you know, people ask things and, and, and it was answering correctly. We're, we're just children. So we don't really have that many questions. We're just asking about each other. How old is this person? How are the Solomon's name? And he was getting all the answers right. Just some silly questions. And then my brother, after a while, decided to ask a question. So my brother asked the question and he said, oh, nobody here would know this. So we'll know for sure. And then he said, what is my father's age? You know, my father too. And and then we asked, and then he gave us the answer, which I don't remember now. It's probably middle to late thirties at the time. And I remember my brother laughing and said, "Ah, that's wrong." But I'm gonna go ask him. And then he went to ask him, and he never came back that to, to, to tell us. So we're still doing it. And then my grandmother came in, and she doesn't like this kind of stuff and she just you know made us disassemble everything that no 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 you're not doing this here in the house no so we had to take everything apart but later you know I saw my brother and I went to ask him and I said well and he looked a little spooky and he said it was right that was his age so he got a <laughs> worried about it more boundaries broken yeah yep. but it, it it's a fun thing the, the Ouija board it's a very interesting thing because there's so many different schools of thought about it you know of course there's people that don't believe in it at all people that believe you're pushing it with your fingers but I've I've done it several times in my life with the cup 
you know, I'm not as used to the real board. Uh, and it, it, it worked. It worked, and we were hardly touching the cup at all. And it moves and gives you the answers. There's also the thought that... Uh, our higher self which can also be thought of as a, a god that lives within us on top of our heads and on the crown that knows everything and through us gives us gives the answer by twitching a muscle twitching a muscle without our knowledge and gives us the answer. Many people believe in this. I think, oh, that the Frosts, I forgot their first names, uh, they, they established Wicca as a religion a while back, the 70s. They, they teach that. They believe that it's a twitch of the muscle. Uh, the same with pendulums, that when you're using a pendulum, even if it looks like you're not moving and the pendulum is moving by yourself, but they believe there's a little twitch in our fingers. But it is a higher part of us that knows it all, that answers the questions. That could be true as well, you know. Or if you, you think about it, uh, and you think about the medium mediums and, you, and clairvoyance and spiritual communication in that level they believe that the spirit spiritists believe not spiritualists i'm talking about spiritist spiritism from alan kardec that founded spiritism they believe that uh the spirit wanting to communicate will use some energy that we give that it's there from us that they take and make things happen from that energy they need some energy from themselves and some energy from the people uh they take energy from the room that's why the room might be cold electricity as well and uh, make things happen they're they're like the the wrapping tables the tables that that move they make the tables levitate with mediums touching them sometimes they don't even have to touch the table it is a combination of the spirit energy and the people there the energy that they use that energy and they 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 give that to the object they make it's not like they're moving the object they don't move the object they make the object alive for a certain amount of time they enliven the table and the table levitates it doesn't mean the table has conscience conscience is aware not not that kind of aliveness but it has energy so it can do things it can move through that energy that's given to it so that's how they explain this kind of thing and i believe they would be explaining the same way with uh the ouija board could be and the energy of the people that make 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 it happen it, it gives it to the little the glass or the planchet on the board to make it move and that's why it needs more people because it needs a big more energy than one only one pe- person can give but sometimes you know, the medium is strong enough that doesn't need many people. I have a friend that have, has used a Ouija board and she's seeing it move by itself without her touching it. When she was communicating with her parents, once upon a time happened, never happened again. So we could have used some of her energy and, and made, it, made it work. But we can talk another day about operations and other things like that. So this is fun. Our is. first experiences with Ouija kind of seance thing, right? My great aunt used to, Asunta was her name. She used to have seances in her house every week. And uh, she told my parents that I was, that they need to bring me there to be trained because I was a medium. And 
my mom just said, no, which is, it's a good thing. I don't, because my, my great aunt used to receive spirits in her body, her and her husband, and they would communicate like that. I don't really need them inside me. It's okay over there. <laughs> you can see Probably them better. through a distance. <laughs> there you are, okay, and and hear, you know, and feel, but I I'm, I don't I don't want I don't desire that experience of really having them in my body. I I don't. I've I've had experience of them trying to come in before, and I didn't let them in. But it's not pleasant. It's not a no. Like many people want that experience. I don't. But anyway, we'll be talking about more too. Halloween comes. Samhain is almost here. So we have a few days. And we'll bring you more spooky, original, fun stories. Boundary breaking and enlivening. All right. Well, thank you so much. This was Coffee with the Josephs. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.